Hi, I'm Sam. And I'm Max. And this is Movie Nostalgia, where we give you an honest review of the movies we've meddled with so mischievously over at Maybe Movies. And this time, we'll be talking about the Omen series. Specifically, Damien, The Omen 2. Yes, the 1978 film directed by Dan Taylor and featuring the talents of William Holden, Lee Grant, Jonathan Scott Taylor, Robert Foxworth, Sylvia Sidney and, of course, a rather young-looking Lance Heinrichsen. Yes, and uh, before we launch into this one, I know it's a few days afterwards, but that's just when our content goes out, we'd just like to raise our glasses and toast to the memory of the late, great Tony Todd. You will be missed. Yes, and thank you for the memories. Be my victim. This was one from a couple of years ago, and this was one of our early kind of requests from, from an audience member. This was from our friend Jen from Gen X Official, <laughs> who bizarrely suggested The Omen Part 2 and Soylent Green, which was a bit like, how are we going to make this work? And actually, <laughs> it did strangely work. There are interesting parallels, so good pull, Jen. <laughs> yeah, oddly enough, I think I was not that much older than what Damien is supposed to be in this. He's supposed to be like 13. 12, 13, 13. In the book, it's specific that he's 13, he's uh, okay. 13, because it's the Jewish age of adulthood. Of course, of course. And I think, yeah, so I was about 13, 14 when I saw this for the first time, having seen the original, uh, which suitably terrified me as a, as a, as a, young, as a young boy. <laughs> At the time, I really liked it. And again, I suppose because as a kid, being of that almost sort of ghoulish age, where, you know, oh, what can you get away with what's pushing the envelope? And this does, in certain respects, more th th than the first one. And, uh, and, and on those merits, I always have memories of enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Coming back to it now is a little different. Okay, different how? I can see how this could have been a better film than what we got. Okay, okay. Just from watching it and having done a little bit of looking into like, the background of the film, mm -hmm. uh, it kind of explains itself. It's another one. It wasn't like development hell, but it did have its problems. It's like uh, Richard Donner directed the original, uh -huh. earmarked to come back and direct this, and then couldn't because he was busy with some guy in a cape from another planet. You've got me! Who's got you? Oh, of course he was. Yes, of course he was. Yes. So they then brought in Michael Hodges to direct, uh -huh. and they had he had then had creative differences with Harvey Bernhard, who's the producer. Right, okay. To the point that, and again, it depends who you speak to, Bernhard will say that he fired him, Hodges say that he left, but yeah, they, they didn't go on at all. They were worried about uh, Hodges' filming style. He was quite... Uh, a, a perfectionist as a director mm -hmm. and would spend a lot of time on things and they were worried about him not being coming in under budget and on time oh I see uh, yes uh, <laughs> apparently in a budget meaning Bernhard pulled a gun on him oh jeez <laughs> okay fair enough and so they re replaced him with uh, Don Taylor who shot the rest of the film but and I was, I was actually looking for it this time you can't there's a, you kind of see it because there is still some of Hodges' footage in the film so the opening sequence of Bugenhagen mm -hmm. that was all Hodges oh, okay the stuff at the factory that was his oh, okay and there's one other bit and I'm not sure which it is it might be the bit in the elevator I'm not sure but there's one other scene that was from his original what he was working on when they removed him and replaced it oh, okay okay well um I think I was just a little bit younger than you when I saw it I might have been I want to say I was 11 Okay. 10 or 11. Like you, I'd seen the omen, been terrified by it. More importantly, I'd read the book, which really got to me. It got under my skin. Being a big reader, I had read the book before I'd seen the film. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it's the same same with the third film. I'd, I'd read it before, before so are, it came out. Are the books all by the same author? Yeah, they're all by David Salzman. Oh, okay. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I mean, especially at that age, I was still quite religious at that age mm. and so like so many people had a reaction to the exorcist this was this was kind of my exorcist the omen series because it, 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 it was scary on that fundamental level okay just two seconds on that point as well that's the other thing as well i was brought up roman catholic okay so yeah so, probably even more scary yeah, for you then yeah. i was i was just c of e uh so yeah yeah it was yeah genuinely terrified watching it now i still think it's a really good well put together film i mean i see what you mean that there there could have been maybe more well, again, apparently one of the other things that we did lose as a result of the change of director was there were more scenes shot with Lars Hend Lance Hendrickson. Oh, I see. He was brought on by Hodges, and there was more character development for him. I thought so. And then when Taylor took over, it just disappeared. Right. Right. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, because Hendrickson's character is... He's the most subtle 
mm. of the nefarious characters in the film. Absolutely. Yeah. Which again, watching it, you know, obviously not knowing all of that when when we were kids, you pick up on the subtlety. So it still works. Mm. But again, when you watch it when you're older, it's almost like, yeah, but there there could have been so much more. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, absolutely. There's more of that in the book. There is a little bit more of it in the not loads, but there is a bit more of it in the book with him grooming Damien. Yeah, I know. I know, but it's it's it's. I'm gonna probably I, have to cut that. No, no, well, no, no, no. We can bad. say that. We can say that. We just can't say the, the word. No, absolutely. We can't say the word. Uh, Pedophile. Who's a pe- but there are a few moments in this film when the 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 main character Damien Thorne is being being yeah being groomed for his future role. And the thing is, especially from an adult point of view, watching it now, it has shades of. Other things. Child-related things. Yes. That are not good. No, no, absolutely. Uh, which just adds this extra layer of complete creepy over those scenes. Oh, definitely, definitely. And again, we wouldn't have thought about it then, but it's because it's so prevalent now in, in, you know, in the news and things like that. Mm. You can't help but not see it. Yeah. Peter File. I must admit, that was one of the things that I always really in, also did in Demi in the film, is uh, Jonathan Scott Taylor. I think his performance is fantastic. It's amazing, especially... I mean, because I took it for granted when I was young, but over the years, I've, I've learned to understand how rare it is that there's a genuinely talented child star, and he's one of them. Yeah. Well, I'll say maybe not a star, but he was, you know, a child act, very talented child actor. He did really well with the tough material for a 13 year old exactly exactly and it's a shame that he didn't actually do that when he's still alive but um, yeah he quit acting in 1988 oh right okay. yeah there's only a few things he did this he did was it Mill on the Floss he was in a production okay. of that with the BBC apparently he was in an episode of Tales of the Unexpected oh right playing okay. a bully oddly enough yeah no I can see that <laughs> yeah but yeah and he's done I he did a few other bits but yeah he seemed to have just tired of it I don't know I didn't sort of really get much of a chance to, to to look into it but yeah no, some of those things he does play and again that's what I mean I think there could have been more in that because there's some nice parallels there to stuff from the New Testament about about Jesus you know discovering who he is mm-hmm. and who he's going to be and so this is almost like the it kind of turns the t- t- turns that on its head. The why me bit. Yes. Why? Why me? Yeah, I see what you mean. It's it's it's, it's got similar qualities. Yeah, and there's there's again even just like from like, like the way the scenes are set and things like that. Again, you you replace the forty days and forty nights that um, Jesus spends in the desert, mm-hmm. which just covers all of that kind of period. Yet with here, you've got him by the by the water. Oh, sea, of course, yeah. Yeah, and obviously the whole thing about the sea, of, uh, about the the, um, the eternal sea. Of course, right. So yeah. all of that kind of symbolism and stuff in there was re- is really nice. But yeah, it's just, I don't know, watching it now, it feels like bits of the film feel rushed. And it felt like it, they could have... Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And could have done with a little bit more breathing room. But yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I don't think it needs a lot. Maybe an extra five to ten minutes. At most. At most. At most. It's, yeah. it's not like it's chopped up or anything like that. But there are a couple of moments that could do with breathing and a couple of things that could do with perhaps a little foreshadowing or further development. I do agree. It's like, I mean, obviously with Joan when she goes, when she meets Dr. Warren and that at the museum. Mm-hmm. And then it moves immediately to her turning up at the, at, the, at the football game. Yes. It felt like they needed something. Just a scene in between, just to show, to show that passage of time. Something like that. Little things like that, just so you've got a bit more longer for you as an audience to let that perk in. Oh, no, in the, that's the same in the book. She goes straight from oh, that okay. meeting oh, okay. and drives directly to the school to see for herself. Okay. That, is, that was originally the way it was written, yeah. Cool. Anyway, yes, it is my turn, isn't it? <laughs> oh, um, yes, yes. yes. So if you don't know this, if you've never seen The Omen, so uh, this is the sequel to 1976's The Omen, which uh, is based on the book, as you say, by David Seltzer, about the coming of the Antichrist. And this guy is the guise of uh, Damien Thorne, and in the sequel, after the death of his adoptive parents, we pick up the story seven years later, when Damien is 13, living with his uncle, uh, Richard, and his uncle's second wife, Anne, isn't it? It is Anne, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, uh, in Chicago, and about his coming of age and his coming into his own power. What I did find really interesting is William Holden apparently was supposed to have been Robert Thornton in the first film. Oh! And he turned it down because he didn't want to do a film about the devil. Ha! And so <laughs> Gregory Peck was his replacement. 
Well, I think that was all for our benefit. Yeah, and so not surprisingly, when the Omen did so well, mm. he jumped at the chance to do the sequel. <laughs> mm. So that was a, a nice little thing. But That's yeah, interesting. Yeah, it also shows you not wishing to speak disparagingly of such you know, a great actor as William Holden. It shows you the depth of his morality. <laughs> Well, let's not get into things like that. No, I mean, no, no. I mean, well, no, I mean, well, it's it's more than just that. I mean, he had the opportunity to see the final product and understand that it was more than just what he took it to be. True. So maybe on mature reflection, he decided that it was worth involving himself yeah, in. Yeah, no, absolutely. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I, I tend to give the benefit of the doubt. No, 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 I don't agree. No, I hadn't thought of it in that. In, in, I'm obviously getting far too mercenary in my old age. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, it did. It didn't go down too well with the critics, uh, but it did. You know, it did good bank. It was uh, about six point eight million, and took about twenty six. Why did it not do so well with the critics? A lot of the critics even were a bit iffy about the first one. It was more of a popular hit than it was a critical hit. Oh. Some of them cited the fact that it's creepy when you have a creepy child, but it's more difficult to make an audience believe that a 13-year-old boy isn't evil, <laughs> is what one of the critics said. Okay, right. Um, okay. And a couple of the others thought that what they referred to as the connective tissue between the, sort of, like the gory death scenes mm-hmm. wasn't as strong or as innovative as it was in the first one. Things like that. Oh. Well, mm, well, I suppose I can see, well a couple of them maybe, but not all of them. No, exactly. I, mean, I, I disagree. Uh, what I would say about this one is, whereas the first one was always marketed as a psychological thriller, this one is definitely more of a psychological horror. Yeah, it's definitely leaning more in that vein than more yeah. kind of high art. Really well, like. yeah. I mean, the, the 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 trick has been shown, hasn't it? We know. We know who Damien is. Mm-hmm. Damien, put the dog down, Damien. It's the next logical progression of that story, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it always worked for me. But yeah, I mean, so that's what we said. I, mean, I don't really need to say anything more about the plot. That kind of covers it. Oh, know, yeah, that does. Yeah, that's, pretty much. That's, that's, that's all you really need to know. And it's also curious to note as well, after having done Event Horizon last week, that if you move on to the third instalment, we get to have Neil. Yes, indeed. In one of his breakout roles. Um, I was going to say it was the first time I ever saw him. Yes, same. Yeah. Same. And again, that's another one when I revisit it now, unfortunately. I like it. There should be more of him. I was I was always disappointed with it, even when it came out. Because again, I'd read the book. And it's again, it's essentially the same story. It's, you know, mm-hmm. every almost everything is in there that's in the book. But the execution just lacks. Yeah. To give it its fair due, I don't think it had the budget it needed. No. No, I mean, this one had a bigger budget than the first one, though. Apparently they brought the first one in under three million. Wow. So, you know. No, I agree. I agree. The, 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 it's it's creaking in places, the third one, unfortunately. Unfortunately, and yeah. Unfortunately, I have also... I, mean, I haven't seen the fourth one. I've got it, but I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, I've never <laughs> watched it. Unfortunately, that I, as I say, unfortunately, tentatively, but I have seen the first Omen. Not good. It's one of those ones, unfortunately, that... Because it's essentially a prequel to the first one. Ah, uh, yeah. So the budget for the 70s setting, obviously in Italy predominantly, almost entirely, is very good. Mm-hmm. Some of the acting is very good. Mm. But it's like somebody within the production has uh, gone, poor DEI here. Oh, okay. There's also, it seems, in places with it that they've taken... And again, it's not a bad thing to borrow, to borrow from by any stretch of the imagination. I would say the early part of the film has elements of Suspiria in it. Okay. But yeah, yeah I, I, it, it's very silly. I didn't, I didn't like it. It felt, it felt like it was a religious film made by atheists. Oh well, that's um, yeah, that's always a <laughs> that's always going to be a slightly problematic one, isn't it? Take that and make of that what you will. You know what's interesting, of course, is there was actually a fourth book. Oh, there was. There was, which has got nothing to do with the fourth film. Oh. There's a direct follow-on from The Final Conflict. Okay. Interesting. Mm, I'm tempted now to put these on my, on, on my list. They're so, all quite short novels. They're all in 120, 140-page range. So I should be able to find like like a, a, a compendium. I've never seen a compendium, but you might be able to find them. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. I don't know about you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to... Hmm. I'm kind of torn on this one. Gonna give it one and a half. I'm gonna give it one and a half. I think. As I said, I do still like it, 
but again, repeated viewings. I, I, th there's little things about it that I'm, mm -hmm. means I can't quite give it a, 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 the full two. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna agree. I'm I'm gonna give a one and a half. The half though. I think is is a lot to do with the fact that it's the second film and it's riding on the coattails. Yes. Um, I give it more benefit of the doubt because of that. Yeah. But it's definitely worth a solid watch. Definitely. Definitely. Hungry? Oh, yeah. I don't need to say anything else. <laughs> Silent Green! Soylent Green! <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs> As always, guys. TTFN.